Okay. Hi. Hello. <laughs> how are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm going to get more comfortable. Oh, okay. please. As comfortable as you can there possibly get. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming out to uh, Brooklyn. This lovely studio. Yeah. yeah. Right? Isn't this as nice as you could have imagined? Better than I could ever have imagined. <laughs> it was really, I did not expect. For you to schlep all the way yeah. out here, I wasn't going to just it have you come to some crummy well, thank you. spot. It you wasn't know? that much of a schlep, but. I always like to investigate different streets and. You're downtown. I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but right. uh, that makes you... sense. I met you, or oh. I ran into you almost literally. I, 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 I let's put it this way: I put myself in front of your <laughs> you near Union Square. Let's keep it that. Okay. Yes, I think that's and general they, enough. And in retrospect, it's not so surprising because I actually did see your husband in the same exact spot. <laughs> At some point, not that long before that. So, that would make sense. Yeah. So you both work, work uh, do whatever you're We do whatever we were doing over is in it that yoga? spot. What is it? Some kind of, you know, extremely difficult Pilates slash, you know, I was just saying before he surfs and... Right. <clears throat> excuse me. And so, but that moves around too. This person moves around. I move with her. I see. Well, it makes sense uh, <clears throat> even surfing... If you're standing on the board, assuming you're standing, yeah. would, would a strong core really makes, well, yes. you know, a lot of sense, right? To have a strong core because you're holding, you're 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 doing the balance and the and um, what what's the what, what you know trying Hanging to direct ten. Ang Ang um, <laughs> so yeah. I don't do Hanging it, but I paddle oh, you don't? board. Haven't no, you, oh, I you tried it. Oh, uh, no, what a great sensation it is. Well, you can lay on the front on the board. I, I that's the way I did it. <laughs> You just laid on the front of somebody else's board? Or? Not somebody else's. I think we rented a... I, when I did it, I had a board and I, yeah. I, I lay on it because I, I couldn't... I tried standing up. I kept losing my balance. So I just wanted to have the sensation. And I was... It was like one of those things where you almost feel like you're in a, a Scorsese movie where, you know, you're going forward and the world is r rushing towards you at the same time or something like that. It's a great sensation. I can see why it's addictive. For yeah. People. I mean, I think he's he's... Very good at it. I uh -huh. was not, so I just did the more genteel paddle boarding on uh, smooth water. That's more my speed. your speed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Um, Still needs core though. So, well, it was kind of a serendipitous Talia that I ran into you because you had been on my mind for for a while because. One of the films that that has stuck with me is this movie South Mountain. Mm -hmm. You know, every year. I'm hoping for just a handful of films that just, you know, they take you on some sort of emotional narrative journey somewhere that, that you, can, you know, you just can sit and watch and be transported somewhere, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was one of those films this year. And I was so grateful that I got to see it. And um, That's so nice to hear. Yeah. You know, because... You know it, what I mean, right? Yeah, I do. And I think she... And Ethan, her husband, who's the cinematographer, did a great job of just staying in a place and slowing it down. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there was no, they just laid it out in a really, I think, interesting way. Yeah. It's in a tradition of, of, of what would you call these types of films where everybody's in a house, although it does take place over a period of time, of course. It does, but uh, when I, I, it's centered I, in the house. it was sort of almost like doing a play. Oh, know? You know, it was it was written in three acts, mm -hmm. and we, for the most part, uh, shot in order, uh -huh. and we shot according to the light. They knew the house; it was her mother's house, and they right. knew the room so well. So everything was geared towards that because very minimal. We didn't have a light set really, mm -hmm. um, and a very small crew, and. Um, right. So it was very well thought out and laid out. And so in a lot of ways, just having this one location and then, you know, there was some uh, exteriors, definitely. That's a big part mm -hmm. of the movie, but it kind of just laid out in that room and how tight it was and how close everything was there. Mm -hmm. Is there a scene you're not in in this film? <laughs> you were, it, it, no. Yeah. yeah. Well, how often does... Uh, not a lot. Um, that uh, that maybe the beginning. I'm not in the girls, because right. you know. Okay, so it's about a family, I suppose you could say, in, in this house in the uh, mountains uh, or upstate New York. Right. right? And um, your relationship with your husband, 
Yeah, it's been a few months since I've seen yeah. it now, so please correct I can, me, and I can fix some absolutely. of these things, and I don't mind making mistakes. Okay. But I just obviously there was an off and off and on again situation. It's a difficult. It's a it's a challenging relationship because he has had other relationships, mm-hmm. and uh, when the film starts, you are in a phase of trying to stay together and have and you or you put the relationship back together. Let's put it that way. Is that that I think she learned something on, which isn't necessarily new, but mm-hmm. I think, you know, because the movie does start out with this birth. Right. And it's interesting because it, it's the beginning of the film and those are usually spoilers, mm-hmm. but you'd also, it's such a spectacular star to a film mm-hmm. that you don't want to also give it too much away because it's, no. it's just so uh, incredible. And it's also irreversible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think that was yeah. really smart also of Hillary, because I think you're right. I think most people would say, don't put that there, don't, you know. Right. But, um, and you're right, it shouldn't really give that away, because it is, maybe we should. <laughs> but that is part of the story, which is there's a there's a point one reaches where you can't mm-hmm. actually go back from that. There is right. new life being. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So you, one could say that the husband is involved in a relationship. Yeah. I, I mean, it seems like he's had an on and off again relationship that it seems that they sorted out. I mean, the beginning of their relationship was her best friend was married to him. And then she sort of took over the role of the mother of his kids and then yeah. had their kids. It's a very mixed family. Um, and con- and I think that's... Blended. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> yeah. Blended yeah, family. Right. <laughs> and... Um, so while it seems complicated to mm-hmm. sit here and you know say what each relationship is, it just it just is. I mean, there yes. just doesn't really matter at some point right. whose kid is who. You know? <laughs> yeah, they were all together. Right. Yeah. In this right. Little house. It's all managing relationships in this film, and exactly. they could be your own kids or mm-hmm. some. You know, it's almost you you see that in this film, like it's. You, relationships are complicated whether they're your own children or their stepchildren. We were talking about that a little bit in the kitchen before. Yeah. Yeah. But another thing I like about the film, about South Mountain, which frustratingly, I can't tell people exactly yet where to go see it, mm-hmm. but that, that I, I have a sense that soon it will be, it will be the case where we can tell people. Everybody's flawed, you know? What's, what's her name again? Lila. Lila. Part of why she's just so believable and so real a character is because you know she actually acts like human being, like a right. human being. Right, she's flawed and she's yeah. uh, losing. You know, things are going away, right. and I don't yeah. think people are at their best necessarily. It's then. you're panicking, mm-hmm. and yeah, you have a, a, a also you have a sense of uh, your esteem or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. You know that there also there's a, there's a strong person there. But somebody who's under a great amount of stress and anxiety with what's uh, going on with their family. I think it's interesting because it is, at the end of the day, with all those things going on, it does sort of, I think there's some dignity to this. And I think that, you know, not to sound like, you know, the love sort of, it's sort of like we're trying to do the best for everyone and the circumstances are really complicated. Yeah. And it's generous, (laughs) (laughs) to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. I think people really need to see this film. Yeah. Because, yeah, because it's undeniably there's an entertaining, you know, aspect to the film, and at the same time, people will will really feel, oh, I really relate to this character or that with that character. Somebody, everybody's going to relate to somebody in this film. It's just because this is these are the way people actually really behave and things that people have to deal with these days. It's funny, you know, you, I, I'm listening to you. You're a man, and it's mm-hmm. interesting to hear your point of view. Uh, Hillary is also said that, you know, younger people in their 20s have really liked it because they're seeing their parents, Mm -hmm. which never struck me. You know, it didn't occur to me. Of course, there's so many different levels here of who relates to who. I think Scott plays also a very flawed character, but in such a great way that he's not uh, demonized or, you Mm -hmm. know, so I think that everyone's really human. Um, right. The film, always... the film, if you look at the film as a character, the, the, this is not judging people. Right. Yeah. You know? Somebody is... asked me if I liked Lila, and I was like, well, I, I can't answer that really. I mean, I did because I played her, but 
she didn't have to be likable mm-hmm. necessarily. So, yeah, sometimes she's very likable. Mm-hmm. Other times you just don't like. Why are you? Yeah, what's going on? Why are you accepting this? Or what are mm-hmm. you? Do, what are you doing? Or why are you te- treat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people might have issue with that too. Yeah. but that's okay. It certainly yeah. makes me think like, oh my goodness, Hillary, she's good. She's hey, something's going on with her. That's great. She's yeah. She can make these stories, and she's not prolific, you know. So when she delivers, she really. Yeah, I mean, she's very. Um, I don't even know what the word. She's so fluid, you mm-hmm. know. Like you know, she wrote this all out, and she was like, "Well, this could have gone in the horror genre, or this, <laughs> you know." I mean, and you know why? And because that scene, you know, and you're like, "Oh, this looks like it sort of turns a little," and she was like. You know, midway through writing it, I don't want to speak for Hillary, but then mm-hmm. she was like, I don't want to do that. I want mm-hmm. to do this. Mm-hmm. And it was the same when we were shooting. I think, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes as an actor, you're like, oh, I wanted to do And then she's like, let's just do it the other way. Yeah. The opposite, which is scary. And um, and I think she's very fluid. And then I think, you know, and she'll, you know, say this. I mean, for her, editing is really king. Hmm. And I, I forget who edited it. Did she? She and Maria. Okay. Rosenblum. Okay. Um, so uh, they did it over, you know, and the other, you can call this advantage or disadvantage is that because there was not a lot of money involved, it mm-hmm. took them a year, you know? Right. Yeah. So they, so other things occur. And that's what I think Hillary has, this the capacity. She didn't get stuck in anything. When I met her the first time, I w- actually was invited to see a screening at Columbia of Chilly Scenes of Winter. <laughs> really? That's yeah. Anne, uh, no, Joan Micklin, no. Who yes, that? Joan Micklin Silver yes. directed it and Anne, and people Beatty. are going to be, Beatty, Anne Beatty. Okay. Right. And I, I, they were showing it in a, because they were celebrating a, a, either Joan or, I'm forgetting now. Anyway, the whole, the, the several of the cast members were there and um, which is actually how I nabbed Peter Riegert for my oh, podcast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, um, and Griffin Dunn and a few other people. And uh, uh, Joan, I guess, isn't wasn't up for it, so she couldn't be there. But um, uh, Hillary was there, and I got to meet her. And they had a Q&A, of course, and at her daughter, who's a teen, I guess an older teenager, or something, she asked this most incredible, the uh, poised question, just really de- uh, Violet, the her guess, or, Hillary's daughter, yeah, Hillary's who's also in the movie. Daughter. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that. Yeah, the, the, her son and her daughter. Oh, family affair. Yeah, it really was. Uh, um, how did you meet her, Hillary? Yeah. Um. Uh, <laughs> I met her in a coffee, in a well, I guess the movie was sort of moving full steam ahead, and I think someone fell out, and I see. Uh, my agents had read the script and were like. You know, I was shooting divorce at the time, or it was right. just ending, and so they were like, "You guys should meet each other." And she was sort of didn't know me that well, and I didn't know her, but we got on, and she, I think, by the end of the meeting, was like, "Okay, let's do this." You know, I asked her all the appropriate questions, and um, and then eleven days later, you know, that's not a lot of prep time, so that was that was a little scary for me. Right, but also maybe like really good yeah like, maybe you know, yeah. sometimes then you're not thinking too much and over preparing and you know uh yeah. and you it, it appears like you really threw yourself into this role like on a uh, but what do i know maybe you just sort of phoned it in and this, yeah, is, phoned you, it in. this is you phoning it in um, <laughs> no i think there are moments yeah where i literally was like i'm not a hundred percent sure what i should be doing here and i think it actually lended mm-hmm. lent itself to it yeah you know, right. when we were watching it, I was like, it's unfolding in front of my eyes a little bit. Right. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, is this a very different kind of role for you? Well. Um, I mean, you sort of, in, I'm thinking Mad yeah. Men, you played a kind of a yeah a, a wife that's. I mean, it's uh, different in that the, the, you know, it was very, what's it, the word, the breadth of it was Mm -hmm. so much so Mm -hmm. um i think in a lot of things you kind of come in and out of a story and Mm -hmm. you can pop in so this thing i hadn't done that in quite a while where it was really unfolding in real time and so the part um yeah i don't i don't know that it's a part i usually play but i i don't feel like it's very far off from me either Mm -hmm. so um 
I liked, I really enjoyed the sort of minimal, you know, like just, it was, you know, there's no makeup. The ha- I, I just really actually prefer that. And, and you really got to show all sides of yourself. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it you're very nice. Good part. <laughs> sexy in it. And you had to really. Well, thanks. I uh, Thank you. <laughs> I well, like there's this streak to Lila. Is that her name? Mm-hmm. Lila? That, that's kind of just this, at one time, this insecure. But on this other side of her, she has this, again, this sort of streak in her mm-hmm. that's uh, very, pretty cool. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, that, it, that comes up. It's funny, yeah. like it's on paper, you know, it's like you said, on paper I read this and this character was this way and this character and then we all came together and then everything was very different. Mm-hmm. And for mm-hmm. whatever reasons, that worked. Well, I have a feeling this is the kind of film where I would think if I was like a producer or some, can- and I saw you in this film, I'd say, oh, you know, this this is a tour de force, so let's, let's put it... It takes some, I think it could create opportunities, but not that you need the help, but um, still uh, in all, it's quite, shows that you can carry a movie, I, I, I think. I think that's what Hillary was like. I hadn't seen you, you know, I mean, I, you know, like 25 years ago, but I was sort of, um, it was good for me to know that. Yeah. It was good for, right. Um, right. yeah, because I think that was like, oh, you know, that's yeah. a different thing. It's a different tool. And right. then I think that... Um, you know, now the the next part of this distribution part is sort of the other sort of sure, yeah, which is it'll get sorted out. It'll get sorted out, for sure. and um, and I do hope people see it, and I think I hope they get to see it in a the theater. But mm-hmm. I think that's probably you know. Well, I think they will. We'll I see. mean, for you know, yeah. I, you know how it goes. Uh, it'll get theaters because it's a necessary thing for yeah. other reasons. But you know. it's gotten some lovely reviews. So that's, that's great. That's so nice. Yeah. 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 How could it not? How long have you been acting? Uh, <laughs> you, let's see. Uh, I, <laughs> a long time. A long time. You started very, very young, though, well, I started, didn't you? Yeah. So I've been how, acting. How, wait, now I actually have to think about this. So... How old am I? Um, <laughs> I didn't ask that, though. No, no. So I'm going to say, let me just say I started at 18. 18 years old? Where did you grow up? 40. Did you grow up in the New York area or well, in New York City? my father was an actor okay. uh, named Martin Balsam. Never heard of him. <laughs> so he lived in New York, and my okay. mother... <laughs> I'm going to... Wait, wait, hold on. So let me rephrase. <laughs> so. Your dad's Martin Balsam, isn't he? <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> I didn't surprise, put that together. Surprise. So yes. there's more than one. I thought that there were probably more than one Balsam family. But yes. So, you said uh, there's part of the dyna- the Balsam dynasty. Well, I don't know about the dynasty. There's And then my mother's the Van pa- Joyce Van Patten. So she lived in California. So I was sort oh, of. By were they, uh, right. And you already said they, they divorced. Yeah. And they like both remarried. Two. Yeah. Uh, by times. the way, uh, your, your mom, terrific in. Uh, Kent Jones film, another great film, which is also playing, interestingly enough, in the same fil- uh, festival circuit year as South Mountain, which is, uh, Ken- or maybe it was the year before. I think Ken- it was the year before, because I just right. saw Kent- something on on uh, her, uh, Mary Kay. Right, Mary Kay yeah. Place, who is, is a, it was called, uh, what's her name? Diane. Thank yeah. you. I had Kent Jones on the podcast for that. So, okay. Now, I typically do my due diligence, but a curious. <laughs> It's 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 some divulging that I'm I'm Have I caught you up? You, yeah, you, you <laughs> so, caught me in a in a moment. Uh, wow, right. those are two wonderful actors. Yeah, so I'd say I just read the Ely Kazan's. Finally, I caught up with that. I, I thought I was gonna have to read that when I retire because it's oh. like a thousand pages. His book. I I haven't read it. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure. Should I? I'm pretty sure your your father's probably must be mentioned in there. Didn't he do uh, Martin? Didn't he? Work oh, he was with the him? actor studio. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Of course. I think there's. I have pictures of them all. Um, right. In the wow. Berkshires years or something. Right. Oh, you know. well, that would have been the group theater potentially mm-hmm. too. But yeah. Was he, he wasn't old enough for that? Was he? No, he wasn't. But I, and he also started much later in his life. I see. Because I think he'd been in the army, and you know, it was a, a period of time that being an actor probably wasn't in, from his family. You know, they. Oh were also immigrants, and so I think it took him a while, you know, I mean, I say later, I'm talking about 35 or 40, is would be normal for a c- character actor, actually. Right, yeah. well, that's the... But he was I, studying with them. I see. Yeah. He would have been 100 yesterday. It was his birthday. I'm not saying that yesterday? he would have been 100. Oh, no, I understand. <laughs> but it was his, I, I was just birthday. reminded, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, that's Has, very strange. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
When did he pass away? In 19, I think it was 94. Okay. So, sorry if I might be off a year, but yeah. Wow. Okay. So you grew up, obviously, okay, so this was in your DNA. It seemed almost uh, inevitable, maybe, that you would have been. Well, it's funny. It's sort of, I think the part that, Maybe, but I think with both those type of actors, they were very adamant about studying. My mother had been a child actress in the, you know, Broadway. Uh, they'd grown up in Stage. New York. So mm -hmm. um, I, she was not, like, into this idea of me starting until I was either studied. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, she had a bad experience. She just was like, you know, be a child. And right. I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. But but I, so I studied. And then I think I studied at the Strasbourg Institute and then with Peggy Fury. And mm -hmm. and then at 18, though, I was like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, once I could, I was an adult. Right. But I was still pretty young. Yeah. Your parents, uh, did that fast track you a little bit, getting into good gigs? I don't know. Or I, were you? I still question. I think like I was able to probably get an agent probably mm -hmm. easier than maybe other people who have had to come to New York and do that. I think there's that. But getting the jobs, I don't know. Mm. Was it, is it true one of your earliest jobs was on the TV show Happy Days? <laughs> don't try so to you did move. do some due diligence. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little just bit. Just the kind but I love. Think... <laughs> <laughs> so. And not only that, I'm just going to just rock your world so, right now. It was yeah, the Jump the Shark episode. So I just want you to it realize. Was the, it, that ex right. That episode created a... <laughs> Just a huge, uh, the end of the show. <laughs> so. It was a late episode then uh, mm -hmm. when they started to, uh, right, which it, it, which now it created this uh, phrase that we were all familiar with, jumping the shark. So it was literally the one where he jumped he literally on jumped Fonzie the, yeah. on the motorcycle. You were that you were in that, those, I, I have to rewatch. Honestly, you don't have to rewatch it. Um, I was <laughs> well, Richie Cunningham's girlfriend on the beach. Oh, I see. So I say that I was completely green, like, mm -hmm. You know, and no you can idea. parlay that into a series of, uh, of of roles in Ron Howard films. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> it didn't really work out that way, though. <laughs> <I don't> <laughs> I never, I've never seen him since. But um, no. yeah, so that was like. Well, you're you're both still. Uh, you know, we're young, still functioning. Young, yeah, um, functioning uh, professionals. That was a big job, though, for me. That was like the three part Happy Days. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was big, but that was the end of yeah. Right. That was uh, obviously after Jaws. Uh, uh, not that you were in Jaws. I mean, that no, it wasn't jumping the shark. Literally, they jumped. He had to jump over a shark on the motorcycle. Isn't that what it was? No, he was. What was the? Oh, I'm was, so sorry. Uh, I have to tell so you this. So he, had to, he was water skiing. Right. Oh, he was water skiing over the sharks. <laughs> so, <laughs> but there were sharks involved. Oh, there, there was a shark. They li it was literally it was jumping Jaws? over. Yeah, I don't know if Jaws had come out. It's probably no. It, it did. It came yeah, out so '75, right. right? '76, and then because. That's it oh, was yes. such a the rate the, everybody was doing shark stuff then it was like you're right because I was not happy it was, to... yeah I would have been way too young to be in that episode <laughs> had it been before Jaws so that was eight okay very good yeah um, we can replay that um. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the videotape <laughs> well that's incredible that's a the, yeah. you're the part of a phenomenon wow you're a, a part of history yeah i guess you know mm -hmm. i was also in the pilot of taxi now you blew my mind now i can blow your mind <clears throat> here you go ready here we go he, this character was not in the pilot but um <clears throat> yeah you know something talia yes oh, that's not even that good that's I good i can actually do dead on uh at reverend jim yes but, he uh, was <clears throat> in the Maybe i think they introduced him a little bit yeah like after a you while right. he, was, he was not in the you know who it was? Andy Kaufman. Of course. Yeah. No, he was there from the start. Yeah. And we had the same jazz guitar teacher. He Andy did. Kaufman. Well, he's a little, he was a little older than me, uh -huh. probably a lot more. And I would go, my dad would drive me to Great Neck every other Saturday for guitar lessons with this guy who will ever be a hero of mine. His name was Joe Monk. Mm -hmm. And he had this little studio. He was a chain smoker, but he could play the guitar, jazz guitar like him. Mofo, is it? Anyway, so I learned how to play jazz guitar. You know, because I, I went to summer camp and I learned how to play guitar. Right. But I, that was like folk songs and then like pop songs. And then my dad would drive me to these lessons, and I fell in love playing jazz guitar because this guy. For years, I went, and he told me that, you know, Andy Kaufman, who grew up in Great Neck, was one of his students. And that I said, really? Because you know, there was one taxi was was uh, just probably ending, and. Um, 
he was said, yeah, his mom would bring him in and uh, she would sit there and he would not blink, but he would play and he knew how to play guitar. Wow. He looked, so Joe taught him how to play. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was my connection to... Uh, Andy Kaufman. To Andy Kaufman by degree. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so you were on the pilot. I was on the pilot, yeah. What was your role there? I played Judd Hirsch's daughter. Oh, yeah, and then I came back some point. He was the taxi driver who was, was actually just a taxi driver. That was his thing. He was a professional taxi driver. Yeah, everybody else, and everybody was else was an actor. Or, right? Yeah. Or a... Or a boxer. Or a... Bo- uh, Tony, yes, yeah. Right. Or uh, <laughs> memorize, or somebody who memorized every, who remembers every single moment in their lives. Like yeah. Eric Lehner, apparently. <laughs> you know, you're, people are going to listen to this and not know what we're talking about. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> well... That's they'll have to That's do some. That's the horror. I, it's like homework for my my listeners. <laughs> totally. So it's interesting because uh, I was also thinking I didn't put it together, but I was thinking, Happy Days. I immediately go to the <clears throat> Richie sister, who the actor died sadly. The, his his sister, the the woman who played it, Erin. Erin Moran. Moran. Yeah, she died, yeah. and then I was thinking Taxi. It's sad that Jeff Conaway. He was I such know. a great guy. He was great. great. He was such a talented guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but you were only in that one episode? No, I think I came back okay. later, mm-hmm. two years later or something. Oh, they brought you back. They didn't have to do that. They didn't that's have that's to. really diligent of, uh, <laughs> um, what, wait, what's his name? The, the, the world Jim class. Jim Brooks. Jim Brooks. Yeah. Did you know him? Uh, a uh, bit? well, only from what that. A and then Jim Burroughs was the director. Oh. And, uh, and I had done some other things with Jim Burroughs and um, but never what, no Jim Burroughs what pedigree Brooks. that show has yeah right? I mm-hmm. know so I think I, I came back and got married on it like they had a, oh. concocted a right. wedding for the and Louise Lasser you know and Judd I guess oh, were she, exes oh, or something oh Louise Lasser now you're wow yeah. oh my gosh you're bringing I'm really back kind of did you meet her myself. I guess you must have right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Draw. <laughs> what a great actor she yeah. is right? Right. and then um, sorry I'm getting caught up with all this stuff but it's it's nostalgic too <laughs> what was I thinking about oh Carol Kane she would play right. uh, Blotka's uh, yeah. girlfriend and then wife and I, I love her too I love her you know I was at a party last night and you're gonna not believe who I met it was unbelievable uh, I, and I'm not a name dropper, typically, although we've been talking about a lot of names, but I, I don't I haven't met all those people. But I, I, I um, there is a new book about Mike Nichols, who I loved and, mm-hmm. I, uh, and uh, everybody loves, you know, his work. He's a genius like Ilya Kazan. There's Mike Nichols and, you mm-hmm. know, Elaine May, who's now making a new film, it turns out. Did you hear about that? You know, what She's is it? She's making a new film. Yeah. It's, it's a comedy, of course, and it's like, a, what is it called, like Hairbrained or something like that. It has some wacky new title. It was just announced that she's actually making a new I think film. I did hear that because my mother oh. knows her. and um, Right, of course. And then I knew Jeannie Berlin. Oh, my gosh. So we were all, um, Jeannie was very much in my life. Really? Like, yeah, for many years. Oh, what, a, what a brilliant people. Yeah. My God, the, the projects and the... Heartbreak, uh, everything. So yeah. anyway, um, but I was so I, there's a new book, and it's like a oral testimonial type of book. So it's compiled in a way mm-hmm. and edited. It's it's just all these different hundreds of people that, or 150 people that knew Mike, worked with him, or were related to him, or something, and they all talk, and they they just take all these different people. And uh, they put it in a kind of chronological way, so that it's in a way it's a biography too, you mm-hmm. know. And it's a good. And I had the two co-author editors on my podcast. One of whom is the son. I didn't only realize this. Like I also just really yeah. found out you're the daughter of these two great actors. But <laughs> this is the, the Graydon Carter, you know, the former editor of Vanity uh, Fair. Vanity Fair yeah. now has this, something new called Airmail. But his son is one of the two authors, and I had them both on, and they loved being on the podcast, you know? And I know you're thinking, how could that be? So, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, so, so does Not he shut up? Not what I was up? thinking. I, <laughs> so, I try to get a word in. It's so easy. <laughs> so. so I was invited by the publicist, who's a friend, to uh, for this publisher to come to this party. And I I, I went to the wrong place first, and I, I, got turn- I said, oh, I'm just going to go home. So I got on the subway, and I'm like, well... I'm already on the subway. I'll just go back up and I'll go to the right place. And I, so as an afterthought, I went to the party. I wasn't going to go. 
And I walk in and the first thing that happens is I'm walking into the door and I almost, and I run into Barry Diller. So I said, oh, this is probably a good party that I came to, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so I walk in and I, then I realized, oh, they're here to celebrate Mike Nichols. So I'm looking at Candace Bergen. Oh my God. And then Christine Baranski and all these, yeah. you know, luminaries. And I was like, Needless to say, I ended up sitting uh, uh, with a few people that I knew, and then and and spending the evening talking to Joan Collins, <laughs> you know, of all the people in the world, hey. I would never have thought I would be hanging Did you out. Get her on the podcast. I I I, I uh, her young escort relationship, whatever, whoever mm -hmm. this guy was, he took my email for. Uh, he wants to send a short that she did in in England. Um, apparently, it's unrecognizable. Joan Collins. She plays a very uh, different type of role in this it's she oh. likes independent film now and she's so you know but good she's for in her. london and she's hungry she wants to work well i think that would be a really good uh wouldn't she be great yes and i the also stories. think it would be a nice you know someone to sit next to at a party i think oh my god she must was, have been and very... she looked great by the way I, yeah. I should say she she really looked good the only other person i'll mention is uh that i'm i, I haven't played it yet is i spent an uh, two hours with lee grant oh another friend of friend my mom's. Uh, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Makes so sense. I, uh, yeah. That you knew her too. Yeah. You must have grown her. up with all these people. No, you had to become an actor. Well, I guess so. All these people must have, <laughs> you must have just been listening to them and or getting to know them and they must have had a profound I mean, impact. Lee, I knew her what daughter, a, Dinah Manoff. Of course. And um, Lee was in New York, but she knew my father, and um, I didn't know her till more recent years, yes. a little better. Did Dinah and your mom work together on- I uh, ought to be, I in, ought pictures. be in pictures, yes. Son of a bitch. Wow, good on you. In the movie version. No, the movie, in the Dinah. Play, I saw the Broadway show. That was my mom, and then okay. the movie was Anne Margaret. Oh. Because they like to do that. I like her, but yeah, I think I your mom her. was better. I saw her on Broadway, yeah. your mother, that in was, that role. Did you, what and actor did you see? Ron- Liebman. Liebman. Yeah, who's great. That was the original cast, right? And Dinah originally Manoff. was Tony Curtis in L.A. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. in L.A. I'm talking about and Broadway. And then they moved okay. to Broadway. I see. Yeah. And, right. uh, and your mom had an ongoing relationship with Neil Simon, she right? She did, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I did a play, a Neil Simon play with my mother of his called Jake's Women. I know that. Alan and Alden, was, was Alan Alden involved? He was. He was Jake. So, you see, he, okay. Yeah. So that was a kind of a amazingly unusual experience because mm -hmm. we did that play for almost a year. Wow. Yeah. It's cool. Was that Neil Simon trying to be Fellini? <laughs> it sounds like it. I don't know. I don't remember the story. Line. I think you're right. I'm, or to, uh, Topper, what is it with the girls that come back as ghosts? And, oh, you is know, that what it was? A little bit. Oh, I see. Like a, a memory of right. his wife is sort of inserting her all these people, self all into these, his present nine women, life. Yes. Eight women. Mm -hmm. Eight people. What was it called? Might have been eight what was seven the... women in this one, but right, no, I know. But you're talking was... about eight and a half, or eight and a half, yeah, right. Yeah. And then it became nine on Broadway. That's right. Yeah. yeah, the musical version. In a way, you know, I, I'm embarrassed that I should have known more. On the other hand, because I was so focused on mm -hmm. this film, and then your uh, another upcoming film that you're going to be in called The Climb. Yeah, which does have distribution, and which I'm supposed yeah. to see shortly. Yeah. And then I know also divorce and uh, this HBO show. Yeah. And are you back on? That's it's it. it that was it. Okay. We two seasons and three. We three, did three oh, seasons. Three seasons. Okay. But half. Have they shown the third season? Yeah, it's on. Okay. But there's only six of them. Okay. Um, well, I like that approach anyway. I think even if, I don't know if they had a choice in that. <laughs> Obviously, most people like to do lots and lots of seasons. Yeah. But I prefer <laughs> short. Yeah. Shorter. I mean, I, I think short's good. I think this got whittled but, a little bit, but um, yeah, it's still, I thought, was wonderful, and I enjoyed doing it immensely. I'm sure. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, I know there was some, some a dust up after season one, right? Yeah, I think it I'm changed. Around a lot. Uh, no, that's okay. I, I'm with you. Um, I, it changed uh, Producer or director, producers uh, or showrunners and right. Okay. Sorry, I keep losing my <clears throat> voice. It's all fixed. But um, uh, then, uh, yeah, so there kept being like new, so it would shift it a bit, you all know, right. and yeah. there was a lot of time in between. But I think if you watch it all together, maybe mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely cohesive. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
I have to catch up with it a little yeah. bit. I, I saw first. I saw the first season yeah, for no. sure. I thought it was uh-huh. wonderful. Yeah, but. and um, so uh, what I guess what I was trying to say was that, on the other hand, I feel like this is very cool to. It's also new information, and I'm able to respond in real time <laughs> to it. Yeah, but I should yeah. have at least known. No, <laughs> I think that's all your, right. <laughs> Sorry, you know, you're very... Joyce Van Patten, my goodness. Oh. I grew up with these people, uh, you know, they were... Well, it's nice to, um, it, uh, that you know, like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes I mean, it, it draws take... a blank on, you know... Right. Depending. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, yeah, like, shame on like them. Who? <laughs> Anybody well, should be doing a podcast. Well, this is a specific kind of podcast. Exactly. And, you know, one of the beautiful things about doing it, other than meeting so many wonderful people like yourself, and in some cases like Paul in the other room, <laughs> as you be- you actually become friends and, you know, when Lee Grant was on, for instance, we were really connected. I mean, mm-hmm. she's like that kind of person, as you know. She's she's likes that, you yeah. know. But she was so warm. And then I did go on the – I'll post it, and I'm going to send you the link when I do. And it's going to be shortly because they're doing this huge retrospective at Film Forum of her work. Yes, I am think I'm going to that. Okay. With my you... mother. Okay, well, so well, I see you there. I I will make a point of coming then. Yeah, I would love to. She which tell me you... what day? I don't know. I, <laughs> well, is I have it, to call my mother right now. You know, want to know? I mean, they're spreading it out over the entire winter, so it's not like it's, it's... in a two week retrospective. It's literally going from November uh, or December, late November to February of next year. I think that my mom was talking about the documentaries yeah. solely. Yes. Is that, but it, or is it, it also, yeah. They're showing so I think that's the part I yeah. think we might be seeing. Do you know she is the oldest living, Lee Grant, is the oldest living female documentary filmmaker on the planet? I didn't know that. And I feel very ashamed that I haven't seen any of them. So you I may look have, though. forward, I may have. Because they were on TV and they were, yeah. you know, they got a lot of good, Mm-hmm. Bro- they got broadcasted, and they were very, very groundbreaking. I mean, most people don't know her for that work, and they no. sh- they should. And well, I'm going to go to film forum and see them in the, a theater. So yeah, and they're yeah. so pertinent. I mean, they're uh, what about gender mm-hmm. and um, you know sexuality and gender? Way before anybody uh, was making any films like that. Of course, spousal abuse. Right. That's what doing I mean. time, mm-hmm. like women in prison, uh, and it, you know. That's not Roger Corman film. I'm talking about a, <laughs> actually women in prison. Uh-huh. Oh, well. <laughs> Candy Stripe nurses in prison. In prison. <laughs> in prison. Yeah. So the doing the podcast has been a great gift in a way because, you know, you meet wonderful people and have those connections. And also, you know, you just learn so much. You know, I started bringing on a lot of writers uh, who have books on film or somehow related. And then, you know, you get caught up in it and you then you just learn more and more and you put all these pieces together you sort of become a bit of a film historian Mm -hmm. and it's like this whole new world that i'm well to hear you two talking in the other room and you know i'm actually in the business and i was like they know many many things you know you're you know well watched many yeah Oh, but we were Paul. talking about document. Yes, I yeah. know what you mean. But we were talking uh, about documentaries, and, mm-hmm. and maybe because you're not a documentary filmmaker, and no one's done the Talia no. Balsam documentary yet. <laughs> Little did yet. you know. <laughs> but you, you probably um, you have some amazing, you know, I'm sure so many stories uh, and relation and connections and people you've you've got. But it was your world. My son has the similar thing. Mm-hmm. I would take him to. Um, because I, I bring on musicians, too, even though I told you it was like not it was off brand in a yeah. way <laughs> that, that it doesn't make sense for the podcast. But I like to talk to different types of people. So and I would be taking him in the cl- like a Joe's pub downstairs and through the kitchen to the green room down in yeah. the basement to talk to somebody. And his mom is an actor. So she's always into Broadway. And she's about backstage kid. And he grows up and he's I'm always going into the green rooms and I'm always going backstage and this, but he's used to it. He yeah. grew up doing this. It's not unusual that, yeah. you know, that's his life is going behind, you know, is living in that world. And I, I wouldn't know what that's like, but how old is he? He's 15. Um, I was going to say it's, it, I used to go with my mother on the road to, mm. this would be like my summer camp. Um, do you remember the Kenley circuit? No. What's so that? it would play. It would be summer stock, and okay. and and it would be like uh, you'd play Dayton, Flint, Warren, Akron. You know, 
all of this, Although really, all of those exotic spots really that we exotic only hear about in summer. <laughs> <laughs> and I would Flint? just hang Flint <laughs> Michigan. in 19. I mean, I was a kid and yeah. I just would hang out in the dressing rooms and I was uh, enamored of just, it was just so much sure. fun being like, you know, to me, wow, we're in Akron. Like, you know, mm-hmm. and we'd spend the days together and then I'd sit in the theater and at night. You, and you, you had a great relationship with your mom. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of a cool thing to do. It definitely was not like, you know, mm-hmm. I think about all our kids now are like going to camp and whatever it mm-hmm. is. But um, I like that. I like, and Harry, and my son has that too. I mean, you know, my wow. son, Harry. Um, How old is know, he? He's 20. Oh, right. You mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And just sort of, it demystifies things a little bit, mm-hmm. which I think is helpful. When you asked what was helpful about parents and all that in my in this business, I think demystifying things was to my advantage. Demystifying the a kind of like it's not about the glamour of something right. or the this or the that. It was really at least with those two actors, yeah. this is what the work is. And right. they're this both is, yeah. They were both um journey people. Journey people. Exactly. I mean, they both were steeped in the theater and I think there is a big difference. Um yeah. I mean maybe I'm mistaken, but you know, um they had uh did a lot of theater yeah. and were artists. Yeah, so I think there's a, it takes a bit of the edge off of the sort of idea of mm-hmm. something, which I also think is a great thing. I think it's why people went to Los Angeles and why people come to New York if they can afford to live here anymore. And so I think that is a great thing. But for me, it kind of lifted the veil a little bit. So um, I, I felt that that was an advantage. Mm-hmm. Um. We only touched on Mad Men a little bit, but how did you work out that you and John Slattery, your husband, how did you work out? Uh, funny easily. man, <laughs> John Flattery. Uh, uh, how did you work out that you were both cast as, like, did one of you get cast and they thought, we're looking to see who could do the other, play your spouse, and they were, oh, let's just hire the spa- actual spouse because they're fantastic. I'm trying was to that, remember this because you... Matt did cast John, and then I remember sitting down with him mm-hmm. and John and like a, just a casual John meal. John Ham. John Slattery. John Slattery, John Ham. I don't know if John Ham was there, John, whatever John. Okay. But Matt was there and then he's like, and I think this was when they were shooting the Weiner. pilot, Weiner. Yeah. And he's like, I think there's something I have in mind for you. And I, of course, dismiss that because I'm I'm like, You've heard whatever, that a times. <laughs> fine. Right, you've heard that a Good on you. <laughs> right. So, but it turned out after, um, which I didn't realize, is for years and years I had auditioned for Sopranos and never gotten a part on it. But I just would go. It was the... I'm David, you know, because I was a fan of the show. Of I, course. I just went. I went and did it. But Matt was in the room and he just kind of clocked me. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so I think it was when you were when you auditioned for something. Yeah, okay. like that. I think this Did is you, my way of saying it's good to show up for things, even though you yes, may not right. Get it's that. always good to audition or yeah. interview, because tr- if you do it enough, mm-hmm. people will. Yeah. You know, if you bring something to the table, you might get something. You and know, I think or get Matt recommended. was there, and he right. he had this thing, and mm-hmm. of course, I don't. It, it just worked out in a really wonderful way. And at the time, my son was younger, and. John was in L.A., so it was mm-hmm. good for me to be able to just not be there the whole time because he was in school in New York. Mm-hmm. And um, I loved the show, and I loved that part. I loved Mona. Yeah. Roger's was, wife. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, she, uh, what a wonderful character. Yeah. yeah. So um, I felt... So I think that's how it happened, and then I think it just made sense. You know? mm-hmm. Do you feel uh, like uh, compelled to... Keep. I mean, there's a lot of roles now because there's so much serial. I know, uh, but I, t- there's so much. Or does it still feel there is still a, 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 a deficit of, of work for women um, your age? Or I feel like there's a deficit. I know there's talk about a lot of it, but I think it's tumbling. Okay. You know, I think like a lot of film actresses are doing television, and then that kind of fills that slot you know and those television has great parts for actresses so i can see why that happens but right it definitely 
uh, look, I just I believe there's plenty out there. So right. I right. mean, between let's say all of the uh, this television and, and of course, which is also include includes this the streaming platforms now, serial work, film, both studio and independent and theater, yeah. or is it? still hard to I mean is it still as hard to find the work you're seeking the good solid like yes. Lila like Mona that kind of role yeah I mean they mm-hmm. they don't tumble one into the next there's always seems to be a bit of a, a sort of a dead period yeah um, and a lot of that and also as you age, as one ages as a woman, you know, there's a lot of things where like, you know, I don't actually want to go there yet. Mm-hmm. I'm not ready to, whatever th- the television version of a woman that age or whatever, I, I still feel like I'm interested in doing, like you said, a South Mountain um, mm-hmm. that had no money behind it. And yeah. um, so I like to move around a lot, but I wouldn't say like, oh, there's five things at my house right now <laughs> waiting for me to read. You know, it's not like that. But I, in a way, it's, it's. I'd like to think of it positively, like that the good things come along and sometimes that's slower. Right. It's, I guess, uh, there's very few people, there's a very small population of actors who just don't have to worry about that type of issue. The overwhelming majority, of, and that's not including all the people that can't find work, period, exactly. or scrambling and mm-hmm. can't make ends meet because they are so dedicated, but at the same time, they can't get the auditions even. or some, But they're talking about working actors. Working actors that who they, can't get, when you talk about like doing uh, off-Broadway, mm-hmm. it's not a living wage. Right. No, you're, you just it's it's incredibly or independent film is not a not a living not, wage. Not, I mean, you're talking about first of all three weeks of a of a project, mm-hmm. and uh, if it's SAG indie, ultra indie, you're talking about a few hundred a day at the best. At best, maybe they try to get some more for you or something. I don't know. No, I mean but I'm lucky in that I'm like okay, I'm not relying on this right, right now because yeah. I had other things going on. Right, but, that hold you like the uh, mm-hmm. HBO show or right. Mad Men that can. Yeah, they hold you over, and then right. you can do those things. But if you are solely just trying to, yeah, and raise, then you have to show up, and right, you you have kinda, to show. You need to up. help promote the film and show up at the Q and As and go to festivals. And I mean, I know you're not paying for those things out of your own pocket many times, or maybe sometimes you are. Uh, I and am. The, and the, okay, because some festivals will, or the production team, the team will bring you, or if you have distribution, maybe they'll help, or the in some cases the festivals will. I'm learning a lot about that. I never did this festival thing before. And um, so I'm learning that because we don't have a distributor or maybe because we don't have enough money in the sort of publicity side of uh, what I'm willing to show up for um, and happy to pay for. But it is not um, some some festivals in Nantucket like will put you up or. Yeah. But um, that's, a pretty... that's nice, you know. I missed my plane on that one, and then oh, um, they have a ferry. Did you take that? I would have if it wasn't twelve hours. It leaves New York City. <laughs> I know it's half the like weekend. Is don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I know I was considering it. I'm like, and then I was like, well, the thing was showing at four, and my plane was at you know noon, and I see it was raining. But um, I uh, so some do some you know I think for Hillary they really do. Right. Um, uh, but I also have. I'm just I'm learning a lot. Yeah. About that. It's kind of fun, right? To, yeah, uh, like I went to Mill Valley home. and then I went and saw my friends in Bolinas and I yeah. drove down. So I try right. to mix it. Sure. Makes sense. That's what I do, too. Yeah, I, you do. I, you go visit. When I go to a festival, I try to, well, not everyone, but some of them, I really do try to make it all so into a story. And what will invariably happen, and sometimes I'm just like, I'm going to just hang out with my friends. I I'm, I feel like, and I, I don't do a lot at the festival right. as much. But I can can still work it out with, you know, links, and I, mm-hmm. I managed to make it work. But, like, you know, I went to Woodstock because I have friends in Saugerties. And we missed each other. That's right. We tried to I hook up there. That's right. I was there. That's right. Right. We were texting back and forth yeah. that weekend. But that's, I didn't worry about it because you're a New Yorker. So yeah. I was, uh, but, no, um, I was having a... I was visiting somebody there too. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I, I, but I, it's interesting that, but that that weekend I just I did line I didn't go to films, but I lined up so many wonderful interviews uh, for the podcast. Oh, that's good. So it was really nice. Yeah, I didn't see um, anything. One another great one I saw there was uh, I forget the name. It's the name of the town, and it's uh, Karen Allen was in it. Oh, I love she her. She was terrific. Also, you know. Hmm. 
taking a role like this is wonderful. She's it's so meaty. She's mm. got she's just so good in this film. Very moving. Very What's moving. It? Are you Yeah. I'm asking you and No, no, it's it's okay. She runs the post office and then That's if great. she finds out that they're they're closing the post office and they're you mm-hmm. know, basically she has to take either some other part time job or retire. They offer a choice and, and it's just crushing because this is a little and it's also like the center of this tiny town. Mm-hmm. It's like they're their um, uh, social spot where yeah. all the ta- you know these people come and they have their coffee and they talk and they gossip and they do the- and they hang out there and then you know they're taking it away Take, so that it, goes so away. it affects the, the community as well mm-hmm. yeah oh, wow. and I'm blanking on the name of so was it up there in the Catskills where did it the take town? place no yeah. no I think it was uh, son of a gun um, you know, I wasn't. I didn't think about. I was going to talk about it, so I didn't really. That's all right. Put we'll some can go back to it in ten minutes. <laughs> so, so like how long it takes to, me to remember anything. Uh, but um, I was glad. I was. I was glad for the opportunity to be introduced. There was another one which I thought was like how I described South Mountain, of where, you know, and they don't have to all be like I was. That that one is a little bit more, I guess, melancholy. I mm-hmm. think South Mountain has a lot of humor in it. Agreed. And, you know. You know, it has an edge to it, obviously, uh, to say the least. Definitely. Um, I think it's funny, though, to see it collectively. The humor definitely comes out. If you were sitting there watching it by yourself, I wonder how that experience, it's very different. Yeah, like when people are watching at home on their computer. Yeah, they probably think. (laughs) Yeah, as opposed (laughs) to being in a theater. very funny. Yeah, right. Some of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, totally. It's And you're right, exactly right. I mean, not having that kind of... Yeah, a collective experience. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a, a different experience watching South Mountain than it would be than if you were in the theater for sure. That's sure. the other thing I was learning from the festivals. I was like, yeah. oh, and it see is, how it plays, you know? Right, and it and it is for a lot of filmmakers. I, I mean, I I'm hoping South Mountain does have a theatrical, even if it's just a few, if it's mm-hmm. just a few markets. But the uh, uh, you know. For a lot of filmmakers, doing a lot of festivals is a strategy. First of all, you can, if you get some good ones and some bigger ones, you get the press from that. But mm-hmm. more importantly, you can see just you have a lot of opportunities to have people see it on the screen. Right. And they're eager because, you know, you take it to various festivals and communities, festivals in their town. They love that and they Completely. come out for it and they support it in a big way. So I really love those festivals uh, more than I do, let's say, a market festival. I I'm think that Hillary's interested. on the same page with yeah. you. She was like, I'd right. rather this, we'll, that'll, you know, mm-hmm. get some. Yeah, but even like a festival like the Hamptons where everybody's, you know, has a lot of money, but they really get into the festival. Mm-hmm. People really take a lot of pride in that, yeah. that they have this great festival that comes to their town, you know, even though they're, Absolutely. You know, their driver brings them to <laughs> the cinema. But I know, I wish we had gotten there. Um, but Mill Valley was so great mm-hmm. in that way. Too. Yeah. Yeah, they were just very happy. Yeah. It was nice. Right. And they, you have some great Q&As and stuff like that. They had great Q&As. Yeah. Uh, I thought. Let's close on one. I just want to also put out, because by the time this comes out, maybe the climb will be much closer to oh. its release. It's a Sony Classics picture. So this one has great distribution. Yes. It's going to play in quite a few places. So I don't know a lot about it because I haven't had a chance to see it yet, but I'm about to. Okay. You tell me. I haven't seen it. Um, but the oh, but you um, know you were in it. I was in it. <laughs> Did you have a, like a supporting role in this one? Yeah, very much so. Okay. I mean, it's right. in sections, but I, I think see. the trick of that to me when you go, you why did you do pages, that? You only read your pages, obviously, in the screen script. You, what? you only read your pages in the script. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, it was such a good script. Oh, it was. Um, I think the thing that attracted me to mm-hmm. it, besides such a good script, was that everything was shot in one shot, and oh. so it was really hard. I don't know where the camera ended up. I have no idea because I haven't seen it, but it definitely was, we would rehearse for one day in one room, 30 pages, and then the next day, basically in costume in case they got anything and we would have to work it out. And then we'd shoot probably 15 to 17 takes of a whole scene with one camera. Like It was kind of amazing. Um, And I think people like it. Who's the filmmaker? Mike Covino and his mm-hmm. Mike Covino. Okay, yeah. I think that's his first movie, and then Kyle, um, who's sorry, Kyle, I'm blanking, but they sorry, produced it, fix. and yeah, so it was very again. I think they had a bigger budget, obviously, than South Mountain, but mm-hmm. yeah. So I just came in like for two sections of that. I see. Yeah, mm-hmm. happily, it was good. Well, obviously, it's it's got a good head start, so yeah, um, they did very well. The film 
at Cannes, I guess. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> they did really well. Pardon me. I wasn't an, an asked. Yeah. <laughs> what? Did, <laughs> no. They I didn't, didn't bring you out to Cannes. No, no, no. I don't. I don't think I have enough to do in it. Oh. So. Okay. Right. I, mean, I know it's it's it's, yeah, it's obviously much more costly to do that. Trip. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. yeah. So, um, but Hillary, I know that I know that South Mountain just it was in Warsaw. Oh. And she's going to Argentina. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I guess it helps to have a job, and she's yeah. the dean. I didn't mention this of the of the film I school. Know. She have a big job. Yeah. She's busy. Yeah. Anything else worth mentioning that's coming up or that we, we may as well mention? Yeah, okay. But, I just did uh, a movie called What Is Life Worth with Michael Keaton about... Uh, I don't know him. <laughs> have you heard of him? <laughs> He's <laughs> an actor. And, um, <laughs> no. So, yeah, I just did that, which is about uh, mm. uh, the World Trade Center and uh, the man I'm saying is Ken Feinberg who wrote the book What okay. Is Life Worth and uh, had to do with being the mediator between... You know who, how the money was sort of allocated. Yes. Okay, so this is obviously not a musical comedy. Gosh, it's no. It's a dramatic film. Mm-hmm. And what's your role in that? I play Michael Keaton's wife. Okay. In it. How how was working with him? Great. Love Seems him. Seems like he's a great guy. Yeah, it was know. great. I mean, they shot uh, again uh, with the budget they had was mm-hmm. all these things have very different challenges. Sure. They were shooting a lot of scenes, and there are heavy scenes. You know, yeah. just I was only in the front of the movie. Um, you know like on a very very fast schedule so it was it was a lot mm-hmm. yeah so and, yeah. and do you remember who directed that one i'm sure you yeah, do, I do. Who's sarah the that one? sarah colavango oh, i don't know her she did a movie and i'm gonna blank on the name mm-hmm. i think it was with maggie gyllenhaal mm-hmm. and um okay. we'll have to come back so to our bona fides are, you know yeah um yeah so that's that's I, a big deal and uh what else? I just did a little bit on the Saints of uh, Newark, the David Chase movie. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> I haven't seen anything. Working with David Chase. And is he involved in this prequel series for The Sopranos? So maybe you should get back in the auditioning. <laughs> get uh, back in that room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. If he can't be on there, maybe Tony's <laughs> we'll a little see. kid now. You can play his mother or Tony. older sister. Michael Gandolfini is playing. Oh, you know, my God. Yeah. Young Tony. Is that right? Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. I don't say that. That's all right. Yeah. Don't worry. And I think I can. I'll, I I'll, never we'll know what I can out. say. Or, right, you right, know, right. Like all of a sudden, yeah. I realize. I don't know much. when is that coming. I don't even. I have no idea. All right. I don't know. Let's see. It's, what time is oh, that? Oh, dinner in four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I could go. I really will do a part two at some point because I do. You know, I mean, I barely. T- I I was very having a great time also talking about. Well, You're growing up as a, a a child in that in that world. It's intriguing, and all, of course, you know, we're living in this time where the, a lot of these people are are not mm-hmm. going to be around a whole lot longer. Those that are still here, so uh, I feel an urgency yeah. to. I try to invite people on like that too, because I do. You know, I. It's just an incredible experience to uh, talk to people that have been alive and, you know, for so long, and who have, yeah, you know, who have been there, seen so much. It's it's. Yeah, and yeah. had a whole life and career. Yeah, that spans, you right. know, and, yeah. and through all that change and what we were talking about, how you know electronics <laughs> mm-hmm. since I was eighteen, and how fast forward that has gone, and how I'm always behind. Oh, right. I mean, I feel like mm-hmm. also, you know, same with the business. Just mm-hmm. like even though you're changing your the way you're viewing things and everything, you know, it's just it must be very. I mean, from where I sit, I'm like, oh, we're in this thing. And I think about my mom and all those people mm-hmm. of that generation and, and how different and how great it is, too. Sure. But and the, but still, the the uh, the core of everything is a good story, mm-hmm. is a well-written story. It hasn't changed. Telling good stories. Bingo. That's it. Yeah. And, and work in your craft and working on your craft. And be prepared. Be professional. Yeah. You know, show up on time and... Uh, <laughs> really be prepared as a, I mean, you know, I, one thing I mean, I take from my, my ex-wife mm-hmm. who is now at, at, I shouldn't, I don't know if I should mention her age, but let's put it this way. She's not ingenue material. Right. Uh, she's just hitting her stride. And um, one thing I've always seen from her was, you know, was always preparing, always 
taking it seriously. Not she didn't go out and party and go out to dinner and parties. Yeah, she didn't do it. You know, and um, you know she would just work and really be prepared. I read of not enough size with her. <laughs> she yeah, to remember. not winging it. And no, I mean and, I think that's where all the work is actually hmm. is the in between. Hmm. Right, keeping it. It's what you're fit what you and witnessed. Keeping, yeah, and uh, that's what my son sees, and you're like, yeah. you know. Ex- exactly. You know, it's mm. like, well, I have to spend these next five hours doing this, and or and, you know, and everything's very last minute now. Right. I mean, I, I, it's been a while, but yeah, mm. it, it's work. Well, thank you for for taking some of that time and devoting it to this. Then I appreciate it all the more because well, uh, um, I know you sound busy and uh, you have a full life, and this I, is part of it, I, though, right? Talking this about is totally part the, of it, yeah. uh, enjoyable part of it, oh, and uh, thanks for uh, running into me, literally, <laughs> and uh, yeah. it was very fortuitous. And, it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs>